Hello and welcome to the MHG podcast, a brand new podcast. Well, it's not really a brand new podcast because it's a brand new year, but it's all the same, so, same as, as, as our podcast. Um, and I'm going to butcher intros because that's how we work. Uh, but hey, life can be a little bit miserable, life can be a little bit dark, so we're here to bring you a little bit of joy and a little bit of light. Hi Bradley, and I'm joined by Stu. How you doing, Stu? Yeah, not too bad, not too bad. Never never particularly excited by New Year. Um, I, no. I, I never really like celebrate it or anything, um, and tend to kind of like be one of those people sort of shaking my fist at the sky when the when all the... Uh, fireworks are going off at midnight and I'm trying to sleep that's how old I am but um yeah no I mean it's uh there's some good stuff coming up in the new year that I'm focusing on so I can't moan too much no no we 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 we, we finished off a uh we watched what did we watch what was we watching oh we started watching that um vigil um, over Christmas oh, yes. yeah. on BBC um, after hearing some good things and we decided to watch the last episode of that um, on on what well, we watched like the last two or three episodes on, on New Year's Eve and it was really good in the last episode so we continued watching that past midnight nice that's a good way of doing it yeah we've been uh, yeah. hammering Breaking Bad again going through that because we haven't watched that for years so that's been good and are we doing that on New Year's Eve? Yeah, so, you know. Nice. No need to call the police on, on either of us then for excessive noise or misbehaviour, I think. Just the uh, the weird smells and the uh, the uh, blue meth. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And those <laughs> weird sort of body-shaped parts in, in uh, plastic containers that may or may not contain acid and human bodies. Exactly. Uh, yeah, watching Breaking Bad. Is that, yeah, yeah, that's in it. inverted yeah. commas, yeah. Yeah, that's that's your excuse. Yep. <laughs> um, do you know what else could be bad, Stu? It could be broken. Well, what what can be broken and bad? Video games, Stu. They certainly can. <laughs> yeah, they can. Um, and I'm just gonna go. Do you know what else those broken, bad video games could become? What can they become? Really good bloody video games, Stu. Yeah, they can. <laughs> Sometimes. So, right. So uh, th- this isn't great for uh, uh, a, uh, a a video game podcast, but have you been playing anything? Well, not much, but I have been playing a little bit. Um, I've been mostly focusing on VR because I've just not been in the mood to play any anything else really, and very yeah. specific VR stuff. Because like what what got me firing the the Quest Two up again was getting Asgard's Wrath 2, but I'm not ready to talk about that because I've not put enough hours on it. Um, Because I've just not really wanted to spend the time like thinking or engaging with stuff. I've just, Mm. everything has been very surface level. I feel like I've had total burnout for various reasons over Christmas and and, New Year. So I've been playing like aerobic kind of games on the VR. So Beat Saber and Pistol Whip. And, like, I bet you probably everybody knows what they are. But for the three people out there who've not got VR or not had a go in VR or whatever, Beat Saber is a game where you... It's a rhythm game where you have two lightsabers and you stand still and a conveyor belt comes towards you, a little bit like clacks with uh, objects on it, and you have to hit those objects in time to the, mu- the music. And the music is very, very good, which is yeah, obviously life or death of these types of games. Um, so it combines like a really good at- rhythm game with the fact that you're using lightsabers to, to cut through these blocks. <laughs> so you can't really lose. And, it you know, it's arguably like on points like if you do it like on a point system it's arguably like the best vr game i mean the best vr game is like obviously half-life alex but you know for sheer kind of replayability really using that kind of physical thing so using it as a workout and everything like that it's definitely the best value for money it's the wii sports of vr really um yeah. So it's a cracking game and it's really always good to get into. And Pistol Whip is sort of similar, but very different in a couple of key ways in that like you move into the screen, although it's on rails, and it's like an on rail shooter. It's it's slightly like rhythm based as well, but you you know, you're shooting stuff. And it's kind of yeah, it's like a psychedelic John Wick, basically. So you're blowing Goon's head off uh, at like insane speeds 
you you can dual wield if you want to and kind of you know spin around and and blow like two people's heads off at the exact same time in different directions but um it's not it's not done in a violent way it kind of looks like uh super hot uh, but a little bit more sophisticated and yeah another one that's just really really good fun and a good workout because you have to physically move your, your body to avoid you know gunfire and also to get underneath objects and squeeze past objects and stuff like that so yeah really 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 good to just you know especially when you can't get out much because of all the rain it's nice to have that Mm. little kind of workout to do at home so yeah that's what i've been doing basically yeah maybe i should rob lucas's uh meta quest to do some uh exercise stuff yeah you could do um and yeah I, i need to start getting fit um, I, I, I'm, I'm at that stage where um, I'm walking like 10 paces and I'm out of breath and things are and yeah, yeah. Um, I've got to get myself sorted so maybe I'll do it via the medium of video games well why not yeah it's it's not a bad way of doing it especially as you don't have to have any extra kit like you know it's great doing like um, you know the beat mania kind of stepping on the pad things but yeah, yeah that's a big faff the quest you just slap it on and off you go so yeah it's worth a go when you can kind of tweak things to be as easy or as hard as you like so yeah why not hey, just as a decide um our first decide of 2024 um of many i dare say um you mentioned john wick uh with pistol whip uh i finally got round to watching the uh john wick movies oh. um after many, many attempts, it's one of those where I started watching the first one a while, like years back, and never got round to doing it. And then I've always just never got to actually sit down and watch it. Um, so far, I've watched the first three, and yeah, them as you expect, they're fine. You know what? The action is brilliant. Um, it's they're like performance pieces rather than movies. I find. Um, and I, sat, I was going to sit down last night and watch um, the fourth one. So I, I loaded it up on Amazon Prime. And then I sort of looked at the, the time frame of it. And it was like, three hours! That, how how yeah. can you turn John Wick into a three-hour film? The fourth one! That's mental. Yeah, no, I saw that at the cinema. And I remember th- thinking it, it was like a total bum number kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. I can't sit down for three hours. I'm going to have to watch it in, like, two parts. Jesus. Um, but, yeah, do you know what? Some violence and gunny stuff, I, I like it. Um, it's, 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 yeah, it's a perfectly fine series of films, but three hours. Jesus. Oh, no. It's like an operetta. <laughs> I, I, th- I thought the, the first one was all right, and then, I, you know, I wasn't as enamoured by it as everybody else um thought it was all right and then the others are kind of glorious they are just fine i think that'd be fine if you just turn off all the dialogue and just just like some like (laughs) and had music had literally opera music behind it i was like this performance art yeah that's a really good point if if only companies were brave enough to do stuff like that these days but they're really not but um i mean because yeah yeah, it's uh like i like keanu but his acting's not gonna pull a film through no (laughs) <laughs> yeah oh. uh, my wife really really loves them she, she became like totally enamoured with them but yeah kind of kind of bounced off it a bit but yeah they're alright is that is that because of the uh, Keanu eye candy <laughs> definitely part of it um, I don't think she fancies him very much because oh, she's very honest and open about who she does fancy <laughs> but um, I don't think she fancies him very much but she she recognises that he looks way better now than he did when he was young ironically like partly because of the hair and you know. I'd agree with that in all fairness yeah, yeah. He, I think he looks a lot better now than he did when he was like whoa whoa and Bill and Ted and stuff like that yeah um, talking of which I did notice there was one little nod to the Matrix in there because obviously Lawrence Fishburne's in it as well um, and it wasn't the the little nod that I thought it would be because he goes, guns, lots of guns. And I thought there'd be a red pill, blue pill reference, in all fairness, oh, yeah. between him and Lawrence, but there wasn't. Uh, so they yeah. rug pulled and they put one in anyway. Uh, true. Oh, that's just making me want to watch The Matrix again. Oh, I love that film. I See, I was one of those as well. I loved The Matrix and I loved the, um, what was the series of, uh, The Animatrix. I loved all those as well. Yeah. And then yeah. the other two films were shit. So. Yes, true. 
but obviously we don't watch that now because it's like a transallegory film so you know we don't want to watch that oh, now it's woke no, not woke. I can't woke. believe they turned that film woke yeah turn it into some woke bullshit yeah no chance <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah we've become a right wing podcast by the way people huh. sorry just, Again. just want to pop that in there <laughs> yeah 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 D- different for <laughs> that, that, that's our 2024 yeah. thing with right wing <laughs> that's the new direction for the new year <laughs> anything we don't like is woke yeah too right yeah so um, yeah, what, 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 what woke bullshit have you been playing then? I've been playing Cyberpunk. <laughs> <laughs> Back to Keanu. Yeah, Keanu. It's the, it's the year of Keanu, I'm telling you. Um, yeah, um, I mentioned obviously like as the early segue, what could be bad and broken and then turn good. It was Cyberpunk. Um, I remember um, was it to the end of 2021 or when, whenever it first released, we was talking about, is there a way back for CD Projekt Red um, after the debacle of the Cyberpunk release? And they've gone and done a full um, Hello Games, No Man's Sky to it. It is, quite frankly, one of the most amazing piece of video game I think I've played in God knows how long. Um, yeah. I just, Wow. That the world don't, right. So let me get first. There is still some bug issues, uh, but it's a massive open world video game. You there are going to be bugs in open world video games because of the amount that's got to come together to create an open world that feels lifty. Like I, I had last night, I was playing and um, I was getting a lift from from someone in the game for a mission, and it tried to turn like the character tries the AI tried to turn out to start driving and caught another car and ended up going in circles because it didn't know how to correct itself so I had to skip the ride <laughs> uh, which I don't like doing I don't like skipping the rides because th- it's just an amazing place just to be in yes um, yeah. I just don't mind that moment of just sitting there in silence it's it's brilliant so there are still bugs in it and little bits like that but overall the world feels so alive the stories are brilliant you, I've gone from going like we mentioned John Wick, a John Wick style shootout mission um, that was just all action. So I'm in the middle of a, what feels more like a film noir style investigation mission. And it's just like yeah. the, the changes between the stories and like they they can go for five minutes, they can go to an hour, an hour and a half, all these little side missions. And it's just brilliant. Um, which means when you do get the fetch quest stuff, it doesn't feel like, oh, God, here's another one. Because it's broken up so well by other stuff. And the pacing of it is just so, so good. Um, I did end up getting Phantom Liberty. Um, I got some credit. So I went, you know what? I am going to pick that up because I've got to... I, 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 I think I've got the mission coming up that allows me to unlock Phantom Liberty. Uh, so it's yeah. to do with automatic love or something like that it's called yeah, the mission right. uh, and I'm kind of putting off doing that one at the moment because I'm just I just like just getting drawn in by everything else and I've got some tarot cards to collect which are proper little side what in other games which would be like nothing stuff but I'm like I'll tell you what I'm gonna do these couple of bigger missions that I'm doing they're like this investigative one then I'm gonna go and collect some more tarot cards um, then I'm gonna go and do another because I've just done the um the one with the uh, spoiler, spoiler, spoilers. The uh, the cab firm uh, yeah. where it goes completely corrupt. Yes, yeah, that's great. Um, oh, that's a great little mission. Um, I love it. it's got the uh, what's her name from um, it, the the woman who voices Glados in it as well, which I really very like. clever. Um, yeah. But what starts off, are you thinking, oh, these are just a couple of little while you've got to go collect all the cabs and everything. So you do all those. And then it comes back to you later and you just go like, the lo- it's like locked down and everything. It's just, oh, it's, it's really, really so well done. And I can't believe I slept on it um, as long as I did and dismissed it. Uh, because th- this, this is what a AAA game should be. Um, yeah. Now, their mistake was they should have slept on it themselves for another year um, and this is where I think the AAA companies need to learn if you've got a good game and you know you've got a good game either don't announce it too early or be honest when you announce it you know go look we've got this game we fi- we know it's going to be brilliant when it's done um, we're going to announce it now but be warned this could be a good decade in development 
that's all we're going to say because then you don't get the expectation of people going well where is it where is it where's the use because you could just go five years in it's still being worked on things are going well uh, but as we warned you ahead of time it's going to take a decade for this thing to be ready um, and if you do get it ready before that decade's up hey it's a lovely surprise for everybody um and rather than sort of like people like me discovering it later on and going, hey, bloody hell, this is actually really good after completely dismissing it, you probably get everyone wanting it instantly. So I think there's lessons to be learned, but I actually, do I prefer this to The Witcher 3? That, that's the question, and I don't know, but it's so, 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 so good so far. And I'm like 25 hours in, um, in game. Um, I think like, 28 hours with like all the other bits in menus and repeating some missions that I found and, and stuff like that and I'm, I'm, I just yeah I don't even want to see the end of it yet it's that good I know it, it I was definitely like that so yeah I got to around the I think I could have I could have done the end game sort of legitimately I think about the 50 hour mark and I think my final time on it was about 90 hours on the on the yeah. original main game and yeah it was it was all like i don't want to let go of this game it, it was all that it was just I, I can't let it go i want to be in this place and it was kind of yeah. like the equivalent of you know when you when you're scaving around for things to do <laughs> i was i'd done everything in the game by that point and i was just like yeah i'm i'm a god amongst men and well amongst women because there's a female character I just people because yes. I'm a person person I'm a them indeed yeah I w- uh, we spoke about like it's weird that there's like the uh, like the a lot of people talk about the like it's a game that's like transphobic in ways and I, I, I think I think we discussed it and we won't go into detail now I, the more I've played it now the more I look at it and go do you know what I think what they tried to do they tried to satirise the way people are towards trans people and got it wrong I don't think there was any ill intent with like the mix it up ad campaigns and stuff like that they had in the game I don't think there's any ill intent there I just think they could completely misread the room and got the the satirisation very, very wrong. Yeah. Uh, I think it was an honest mistake on their part and I'm willing to give them the benefit of the doubt. Yeah, no, because I agree. The, yeah. yeah, the fact is you can be any character you want uh, right down to being able to design your own genitalia, um, which for some people who are trans for people who are not sure about themselves i think that's a great outlet because like for me i could choose a character and i've chose a female form character with genitalia uh with male genitalia sorry um as a, like you know if i wanted to be my true self that's what you know that's what i honestly think i i would be uh, but being able to like sort of like put that into a game rather than choosing a man or a woman um, is I think is absolutely forward thinking. Uh, but anyway, that we we spoke about that before. We'll probably speak about that again down the line, uh, more in depth. But yeah, it's you know that side of it. I I think they just misread the room. I don't think there was any ill intent. Uh, but you know, it's a very inclusive game, um, which I really like as well. There's no good people. There's no bad people. As such, there's people as well which is really well done it's not just pure good and evil just oh yeah i just really so good yeah i i completely agree it, it just seems to have that brilliant balance of of being a kind of active action adventure game but with rpg trappings which is how i feel like western you know western rpgs kind of are really and it just does it so so brilliantly well and you really do feel like you're playing a character and you do feel like the other characters in the game are proper characters and properly well written but it doesn't just have them be themselves by big exposition dumps so it just yeah for me it's one of the all it might well be an all-timer for me i think now yes it it reminds me the, the closest analogy i can get to is um the shawshank redemption in films in that it became this thing that the people loved and it like tops the top 10 lists though, all the time mm. of people, the public vote, <clears throat> but it gets absolutely nowhere near. And it it will get there. It gets closer with the gaming community, with the, the gaming journalists. But 
it still has that stigma of not being liked by the, the journalistic community when it came out. And they yeah. kind of begrudgingly gave high scores to the <clears throat> to the versions that ran well, but were constantly criticising the versions with bugs, which is fine. But then to not change your mind and attitude after that is a little bit reductive. And <clears throat> yeah, I feel that it's it's a little bit similar to uh, Shawshank with that, that it's it's always going to be yeah. the people's favourite rather than the uh, the journalist's favourite until those journalists are old and out of the game. <laughs> like You've got like... Oh, yeah. A bunch of Gen Alpha who played it when they were 10 going, God, this is the best game ever. Why don't the old people say this is brilliant kind of thing, you know? Yeah. Totally. It's, uh, it does some really good things as well, you know, that, I, that, that I think a great quality of life that could be introduced elsewhere. So it's like, there is a limit to what you can carry, but I've never once filled that limit. Um, yeah. Obviously, this is uh, Cyberpunk, not Shawshank, by the way. Um, <laughs> yeah. He just has um, his prison wallet yeah. and that you can't fit a lot in that. Yeah, um, so like I, I, I didn't realise initially there was like, a, a, like you could become incumbent technically, but I've never got anywhere near that, and I'm looting everybody I'm seeing. You know, I'm seeing anything going. I'm having that. I'm having that. I'm having that. I'm having that. I'm a proper thief. Um, also, you can pump all your level up points into one thing, and but you don't feel. You know, like you play other games. Like if you play Fallout and you put it all into intelligence, for example, in Fallout. And then you realise you can't pick a lock or or you, you're not very good at actually shooting and getting quick chances. So you're like, well, do I just, all I could do is play this in like this stealthy way or I try and talk my way out of things. It doesn't feel like that in Cyberpunk. You can still feel like a badass who can shoot the gaff up if you needed to. Um, or there's ways, like if there's a door or something that these, like, ah, oh, you've got to brute force it, but you haven't brute, got a brute force thing. You could do technical abilities to get through it and stuff like that. So it's well balanced there as well. And I didn't realise it also has a stamina bar. Right? I just didn't realise. I mean, I I one of my upgrades said, oh, it increases your stamina. I'm like, there's a stamina bar? <laughs> I've been running around and punching things left, right and centre. I didn't realise there was an actual stamina. Because it's taken these things... And it's like the stamina thing, it kind of negates a bit what your strength might be. So you might, if you're hitting someone, you might not hit them as hard. But if you're hitting them with a katana, you're still going to do damage. And it's not just gone, oh, your stamina's gone, so your katana's going to like be like tapping them with a bread knife. It's not, it's gone, you've got a katana in your hand, it's still going to do damage. Yeah. Your punches are still going to do damage, even if you've lost all your stamina. So it's these little things it does really, really well that I think are very much understated and it doesn't get enough respect for because they're, they're the things that are so frustrating in some other games. Like the Fallout series, I love Fallout. But the frustration of going, oh, can I take this trash with me and like use it to craft and trade later? Um, and you're like, oh, I don't know. The trade, it's crafting as well. You go in and you craft, you do it and it just gives you a nice little nice sort of like craft this craft this that then goes into this and it does it all there's no sort of like you don't even really need to think about the crafting you just do it and then you go oh i've got all this up to a like a tier six thing now this is great um and everything feeds into everything else you're not going oh if i use this crafting stuff on a tier one item do what am i going to do about no you t you build tier one items um crafting materials and that tier one feeds into tier two and tier two feeds into tier three and it's just yeah it's those little touches that so many games get wrong that ruin great experiences that with this takes what could be a mediocre experience and was at one stage a bad experience and just elevates it up that little bit more it's oh yeah if this isn't my not game of 2024 and i'm not gonna put it in my 2023 list because i only started playing it this year if my not game of 2024 i'll be very very surprised yeah yeah no it is an absolute cracker yeah so on that subject, then uh, we should we should get onto we should get onto the stuff we played last year and start going through it a little bit. I reckon. Yeah, I've, I've kind of forgot there because all I've got on my mind is Cyberpunk. So <laughs> yeah, Cyberpunk game of the year twenty twenty three. Yeah, it was a really good year actually. A lot of people talk about how good a year it was with like your major releases, uh, like your Armored Cores and things like that. Um, your your, your Alan Wake Two, which a lot of people liked, and. Um, all, all things like that are sort of like really good but I think the indies have had an absolutely stonking year as well yeah, um, but I'll pass over to you anything VR related because that's just not on my my radar at all um, but I know there's been some pretty nifty VR stuff as well uh, but yeah you start you know what's, what's something that's like surprised you or 
or come out of left field that you just, you know, you kind of like, this is actually really good. I wasn't expecting it. Well, I think the the main one I wasn't expecting was probably Arc Racer, which is the one that's the mm. kind of wipeout. It's not like a clone. I mean, it, it kind of clones the, the mechanics of it, but it's more of a, a kind of sequel, like a, a, a legacy sequel kind of thing. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's like saying like Formula One is a clone of uh, Gran Turismo. They're, they're both car racing games. There's got to be some DNA that's shared. Precisely, yeah. And like yeah. I said, when when it when I first started playing it a few months ago, it's it's got that excellent thing of the the early Wipeout games, like the first three or four. They kind of they all had the same sort of DNA as you say, but they would kind of lean into one thing or another as they moved forward and different branches would lean into different things and, and they kept that up all the way through really Psygnosis did or Studio Liverpool as they became and um, yeah the, uh, that was one of the the glorious things about it and there were very very few if if not none <laughs> of the Wipeout games where people went ah no I didn't like them introducing that um, they even if they focused more on a certain thing, I think people generally stayed with them. And this follows in that DNA tradition, and it kind of focuses on other things. And you can listen to the individual episode, um, if, if you like, it for my, my detailed thoughts on it. But it just did that really well, and it was a single-person development, and it's really incredibly cheap. It's available on Steam. I'm not sure if it's available on consoles. <clears throat> but yeah, incredibly cheap. A great wipeout game to play. And even better than that, and tying into VR. So there's that new mod come out where you can play supposedly all <laughs> um, Unreal Engine 4 and 5 games in VR on PC now. It's like a mm, yeah. this ultra mod, basically, that allows you to do it. And one of the <clears throat> sort of flagship, as it were, ones is like the Robocop Rogue, Rogue City. and But all of them, all of the games should, to a greater or lesser extent, be able to be played in it. And this is one of them. I've not had a chance to do it yet, but I'm really looking forward to doing that as well. Because, you know, Wipeout in VR is just one of the greatest experiences. You just can't beat it. So that's a real well, standout, massive kind of huge thumbs up game from me for 23 yeah, it's yeah. I, I I've played a, a little bit of it, and whilst I haven't got that feeling of it yet as you, it is really good. I am enjoy. I've enjoyed what I've played of it, but I've not played enough of it to really sort of go all in on it like 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 you have. Um, but but so that makes a change for you to be enamoured by something. Could be going oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sure. Very true. Uh, no, it's really, it's really, it is really good. Uh, I do want to spend more time with it. I'll, I'm gonna sort of start it and bump it onto my homepage on the uh, Steam Deck so I can re- remember it and give it a play. Um, so for me, a game that jumped out of absolutely nowhere, and I honestly, I, I kind of saw it and initially thought this is gonna be crap. Uh, because it's got it, it looks bland in many ways, and um, it's it's got the sort of the look of a. I don't want to say it looks like an asset flip, but it looks like it's got asset flip mo- models, and the logo for the game looks like it's just been slapped on. There's no effort been put into it. The menus are are really poor, um, but the game turned out to be brilliant. Um, and the best climbing game of the year, uh, because there's been more than one, um, and it's not Juicent or Juicent, Juicent. It's not that, um, even though that's really good. It's New Heights, which is a realistic rock climbing game, essentially, or well, climbing and bouldering. It says um, where basically you control each of your character's limbs using the sticks and a mixture of uh, the triggers and things to like to choose whether you're you're grabbing or whether you're uh, you're you're releasing and then you've got to really consider foot placement to climb up the rocks uh, you've got like proper like rock climbing um uh, like indoor rock climbing feed so you've got like that grippy yellow handy holdy things if you want them um and then you go out onto real rocks and you take what you've learned you can climb up castles etc 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 um and it's just like just a really really good 
experience. You know, it, it's, it's got no no bells or whistles. It's got no pizzazz about it. It's lacking polish, but the climbing in it is absolutely outstanding. Uh, but I tried it in uh, one of the next fests. I was like, this is really good. I can't wait to play the full thing, see what it's like. Got a code for it. And, oh yeah, it is such a good game. What I still pop back to now and again, uh, if I fancy a bit of a challenge, just do a random climb. Can I get up there quicker than I did before? Um, that kind of thing. Um, can I fall less? Um, can I find new routes? All, all that kind of thing. It's just... Yeah, it's a really, really good game. Uh, but I just wasn't expected. And I don't think enough people have, have played and more people should play. Yeah, there's a, there's a good few like that that kind of... They're really great, really solid games. And just for one reason or another, probably mostly just the crowded marketplace, that they, they, don't, really, mm. they don't really hit that thing. And they need that marketing push most of the time as well, which is, which is a shame unless they get you your lucky kind of, you know, vampire survivors kind of hit um, situation. But yeah, no, that does sound like a really good one. It's one I'm looking to check out myself at some point too. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I would argue maybe it's at like 17 quid um, in early access. It's maybe like only if you're really intrigued by it, it's worth it. Otherwise, I would maybe wait for a full release or a sale um, if it's only something you're kind of like, uh, maybe, but there is a demo as well. So there is that to it as well. Yeah, yeah fair play. And Oh, um, yeah, on, on, the, on the subject of the, the VR stuff, one of my yep. special mentions for the, for the year is that Samba de Amigo Virtual Party. Which is the um, you know, the, the VR version of the party time or whatever they called it on the on the Wii, on the Wii. Oh my God, how old am I? On the Switch, <laughs> bloody hell, fire! <laughs> oh my Nintendo, <laughs> yeah, oh, Jesus, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's the it's the the VR version of that for the Quest, and yeah, I mean, it's just excellent. It's it's one of those that it feels like the true home of that kind of game, you know. Uh, just that stuff coming into the screen in that way, giving you that, that the better windows for timing stuff is such a big thing, you know, when you add in that third dimension. Um, it, it really works really, really well. And it, it it asks a lot of you. There's a there's a lot of kind of throwing poses and ch- ch- like changing up in the mini games. And again, listen to the episode for like the full breakdown of it because it's such a great game. If you've got a quest, it, it's one of those that you absolutely have to own. If you're interested at all in flinging your arms about, you know, in virtual space, which a lot of us are. Um, but yeah, no, a little bit under the radar, a little bit kind of, you know, how many people have picked it up. I hope it's quite a few, but yeah, really, really great game. That's a, a little bit kind of sidelined. So Pick it up if you've got the uh, capability. Mm, definitely, um, I, I, I did like Samba de Amigo in the uh, the olden days um, on the Dreamcast. I think I played it. Um, was it on the Dream? Was it on the Dreamcast? Yeah, yeah, that's right. The yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's uh, yeah. yeah, nice and old now. <laughs> but, um, yes, yeah, and, and that um, thing again of <clears throat> the technology moving on to the point where you, you're not ever blaming the controls in VR because. That they're always perfect and well, always precise. You might. Well, you might. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah. You can always blame. The oh, controls. absolutely. You're never bad at a game. You need. Show. You Come need on. that as an out. Definitely. Definitely. <laughs> yeah. But, um, but yeah, no, it's not like you know. Uh, I remember playing Samba Domingo on the on the Dreamcast and those maracas and a lovely idea that worked seventy percent of the time. Let's say. <laughs> it's almost like, and it's, I, I think this should be their new their new phrase: Sega a bit ahead of their time. Just a bit. Just a bit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to change tact a little bit now because I want to talk about very briefly a game that I I was if you'd have said to me name an upcoming game Brad that's going to be your top 10 list guaranteed I would have said this one but it's not and it's probably one of the most disappointing games I've played this year and that's City Skylines too uh, yeah. I was so looking forward to this take City Skylines Take what the modding community had done and just, there you go. There you City Skylines to everything with the modding community had done into the current City Skylines. A few little, a little like bells and whistles and little changes and golden. No. 
Um, it released a bug filled mess in the end. It, you know, the core stuff is still there. When you first start, you're like, oh, this is absolutely fine. And I, I was drawn in, but the more you play it, the worse it gets. Um, it's, it's, it's kind of City Skylines by someone who's like just trying to be like City Skylines and doesn't quite get what it is. It's just so. Like the new things they've introduced, such as the farming and the way you can do the farming and stuff like that, is is all fine, but it doesn't add to the game. It's it's gone bigger and quote unquote better, um, and I think it's pushed itself too far in, in, in how it works. And yeah, I, I one of the things I hoped it would have had would have been almost like a, like a. Uh, an architectural painting like i i sometimes want to sit down and just go right let me plot out some rows and pop down buildings and make my cities that's what i want to do um i don't care about the um the resource management and, and stuff like that i just want to make nice looking cityscapes um, and the first game allowed you to do that you could do that you could turn everything off and just go build your city um, there were mods then that allowed you to remove the the birth and death rates and all stuff like that, the needs and everything of, of all your citizens, which was really, really good. And again, it's suddenly going to City Skylines 2. Take that mod that was really popular and pop that into City Skylines 2 as a feature. No, not done it. Um, and it kind of like to go from sort of like uh, cityscape painted almost in a way to sort of having to play the game properly in in the way they've attended it is a bit of a disappointment. But even what they've done in terms of how you sort of like you unlock stuff, it just doesn't feel quite as good. Um, and it's yeah, it's just yeah, it's cities, but it's not it's just not quite as good. Um, and broken in places and that's just a shame because it was quite possibly one of the most anticipated games of the year for me and it's just yeah what a shame yeah that is a shame it's it's often like i mean it's not a game i've ever played or ever would but i mean i've played i've, I've played things like that that have like iterative releases and in the meantime between the iterations people mod them and it you really have to come like with your firepower or blazing when you're bringing out a sequel in that situation you've got to bring on everything that the community has has helped improve because it's that's the, them creating that is their voice it's their them saying oh this is how we we make it perfect you know and um i think you know i think that some do it and some some don't manage it i think unfortunately most of most of those things fall in the ea space so i don't get to play them very often <laughs> don't want don't want mm. to like the your, your formula ones and your, your football games and stuff like that um but yeah no there's definitely that thing of you when you come back you've got to come back fighting and bring the right things with you and uh, it doesn't sound like they have which is a is a real shame but yeah i mean as disappointments go that's a big one but it's probably not as big a disappointment as my biggest disappointment of last year which was and that's me <laughs> yeah it's well that's perennial that's that's every year but um no my specific specific biggest disappointment was uh, was tears of the kingdom because you know, I absolutely loved Breath of the Wild. It was it's one of my favourite games of all time. It's right up in my top five. Um, you know, it, its position may shift around a little bit, but I think it's always going to be there or thereabouts because it's it's just a magical experience for me. And Tears of the Kingdom just really didn't land at all. It, it felt it felt very bare when I was playing it, and you know, it felt you know along with being quite barren, it it did have that asset flip feel to it even though there was new a lot of new content it still it still felt like <clears throat> not like Majora's Mask which was deliberately a kind of released after a shorter amount of time and deliberately a kind of Gaiden style game this is like a full sequel um but most of all that that building that building things nuts and bolts style just no interest in it whatsoever and it forced you to do it it wasn't a feature that you could ignore it was absolutely key to the game and it's just like, for me, that's just, an, I mean, it's an element that, you know, some people's eyes light up and they're like, oh my God, that's such a great thing to include. It, it it transforms the game. It's what you want when you want that, you know, progression in this kind of series. And for me, it was like, well, you know, 
how can you improve on perfection? You can't. You just introduce new stuff and you break it. And uh, that was really how I felt about it. And it's a purely personal thing. It's not. It's not a slight on the quality of the game because the game itself is is really high quality. But yeah, it, for personally for me, it was a huge disappointment. It just it just lost me completely. And now we're going to get our biggest numbers because you've gone for the Steph Sterling approach of that's how we get the numbers there. Oh, absolutely. There. Well, we did in the episode where it came out as well. I don't know what the stats are on that one, but yeah. I know. Uh, game of the year, not Tears of the Kingdom. Going to finish on very quick ones. Uh, all right, we'll do uh, just a very quick, right, you can spend 30 seconds just telling people like why they should play this next game, whatever you choose, uh, but why it's not in your, going to be in your top 10. Um Yeah. So I'm going to go first. Yep. Um, And I'm going to go for The Repair House, um, which is a, like, basically a a game, like a simulator-style game is what I suppose they call them, isn't it? Uh, Where you go in and you've got a business where basically people send you stuff and you repair it. Um, And it got mixed reviews across Steam and everything. Uh, some people like it, other people really don't like it. I'm in the camp of, I really, really enjoy it. Taking things apart, putting them back together, giving them a paint job, a cleaning, getting all the new parts in. I'm all in for that stuff. It's a it's a fantastic little game. Um, not game of the year material in any way, shape or form, but it's just one of those games where I'm glad I've got it and I will pop back into it every now and again, fix a few bits up just to relax. Um, and you know what? It's it's less than 20 quid as well. It's just one of those perfect games to have on the go, on your Steam Deck ready. And yeah, I just really, really, really enjoy playing it. Um, so yeah, The Repair House, not a top 10, probably not even a top 20, but just a good, nice game. Yeah. And it bears repeating that things that land in our twenty like number twenty five spot are probably still really good because it was an insane year for good games. Yes, it really was. And uh, yeah, picking one as a kind of special mention apart from what we've done already is really hard because there's still so many good ones. But oh, well, we could go on for another three four hours going through games that won't make our top exactly. ten that are still worth playing. I know it's mental, but I mean, I will I will call out Cotton Rock and Roll. Um, because I started playing that at the beginning of the year. It's a side scroll and shoot them up in the Cotton series, and it doesn't do anything like spectacular, you know, compared to what the previous games did or do. But it's really, really excellent. It's a, it's a it's a perfectly balanced Cotton game, and it's got loads and loads of characters in it that are, all have their individuality and play style and are. You know, sometimes injected from different games even, without spoilers. It's totally one of those that, you know, if you've got any interest in this genre whatsoever, it's it's one of the real one of the last few years real highlights and standouts. And there's there's been a good few of them, you know? So it's it's doing well. So yeah, it's it doesn't do enough new for it to be, oh my god, you know, this is top ten material. But it's definitely one of those genres probably a genre staple of the last few years so yeah any interest in it, in it whatsoever it's definitely one to check out i like um, the repair house i'm looking it's got less than 50 reviews on steam which suggests it hasn't sold all that well either yeah very um, niche for those guys yeah so the repair house hasn't sold that well this doesn't seem to have sold that well um hopefully i'm wrong hopefully people have just played the head out of them and forgot to write about them um but there you go so if they're the games show that haven't made our top 10. Can you imagine how good our top 10 is going to be next week mm. and how everyone's going to be in agreement with our top 10? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, when mine's not... Uh, gonna, I don't think mine's going to have a triple A in it at all uh, because Boulder's Gate's in D, isn't it? If that gets in. Uh, yeah, I guess it, I guess so. I know it cost them a fortune, but I, I think they are an individual studio. They are. They, it's published, published yeah, it was published by... Hasbro ultimately wasn't it because they own Dungeon uh, Wiz- Wizards uh, of the Coast. I don't know. Oh, I'll have to check on that. But it's, uh, anyway, it might. Let's say it might be. It might be. indie, might not be. Uh, technically, I suppose you could say technically Cyberpunk's indie. I suppose. Yeah. In the way that Valve are um, indie, I guess. Yeah. 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 Um, so, but yeah, you can't put Cyberpunk in a in an indie. 
Well, Dark no, Void, if you'd really. like that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, that's another discussion about what actually is indie these days. Um, true, but it's... Because Dave the Diver's not indie. Yeah, I know, that's true. It isn't. Yeah. But, yeah, no. Uh, yeah, your, predi- your predictable triple A's, they are, they are not there, really, I don't think. It's going to be an unusual one, but a good one. Some corkers in yeah, there. Yeah, we're different. Well, we're different, not just for the sake of being different. We just genuinely don't play those games. Yeah, that's true. Um, so there you go. Um, and it's not Tetris this year. That's a shame. <laughs> yeah. There's been no new Tetris this year. No new proper Tetris this year. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah. Uh, oh no. Um, anyway, yeah. Um, I've got nothing else. Um, so I'm gonna. I'm gonna be quiet. I'm going to shut up now and I'm going to give the floor to you to decide what we do next and how we take this out. Yeah, no, fair play. No, I mean, yeah, <clears throat> it's been a, it's been a difficult kind of last few weeks, but yeah, games have kind of been an escape in a way, but only really into VR. And I think the, the fact of how far it takes you away, VR, versus any other kind of, you know, entertainment um, is, is quite unique. Uh and very good for getting you out of the out of the way because I think it's it's similar in a way to how books like novels take you out of things when you sort of create in and an, you create that world and you're in, immersed in it um, and obviously like yeah with VR you're just immersed in it you don't create it but yeah sometimes you need to have a bit of a getaway and I definitely needed that the last few weeks so it's been a it's been a bit of a boon and I've been off the kind of I haven't turned my Steam Deck on in about a month which is crazy. Uh, it's normally just permanently on and I have the, the constant <laughs> the constant push-pull of, oh God, do I run it off the battery or should I plug it in? Or, you know, how quickly is this going to run out and all that sort of stuff. Oh, mine's just permanently plugged in. Yeah, that's probably for the best, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's, it's, it's been a funny, it's been a funny month or so and it, it's, it's not come across in the podcast because we recorded the last two sort of back-to-back but um, yeah, it's been a bit odd but I'm hoping things are going to be better in the next few weeks and, and uh, we'll talk about it more as we go along. But for now, I think that's it. So as usual... Follow us on all the socials, make sure you engage with our content there and join our Discord if you fancy having a chat with like-minded people. And other than that, have a good week, Happy New Year, stay safe and stay sane.